up y'all it's your boy the one and only a switch aka um <laughs> jen kazama without the rage <laughs> aka who the hell leave my goddamn jelly on the damn stove <laughs> hey <laughs> i don't that should not be funny aka uh, the undisputed, undefeated, uncontested, social distancing champion. Yay. A.K.A. the Komaki Tiger Dropper. Bringing you another episode of Switches Sights. Episode 125. 125. <laughs> gotta gotta <laughs> put a furrow. 125. <laughs> Um, for those that don't know, Switch Site uh Switch Sites podcast is a solo gaming podcast where I talk about just that video games. Um today's date is October 14th, 2021. Uh man, it just hit now. There's like only two two more months left in the year, technically. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Another year, another year pretty much ruined by you know who. So, um, yeah, I mean, worldwise, there isn't really nothing, uh, anything necessarily, uh, worthy of, uh, speaking on. Uh, apparently, uh, the Batman trailer dropped with uh what's his name robert patman <laughs> I'm butcher, I'm butcher. Uh, uh, it's only funny to me i know i'm sorry uh i'll get him one pattinson is that it <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry apparently everybody loves his voice i don't know i have to i have to delve into that uh a bit more in depth but i mean i guess there's that i don't know i don't know um yeah well outside of that uh video game wise uh some very sad news in a lot of aspects <sighs> i don't know if my heart can take it but you know what uh we're gonna let it out we're gonna let it all out in this episode so um yeah so <laughs> Without further ado, um, let's stop the dilly dallying and get right into it. Uh, episode, I don't know why I said episode, but fuck it. <laughs> um, first topic of discussion, it hurts. It hurts to even have to utter these words, to be honest, but, um, with a it's with a great amount of pain um for me to say that uh whew, it's hard to get this out you know <laughs> I'm making this way more dramatic than it needs to be um Tasha Hiro Nagoshi of course uh the godfather of um uh the Yakuza series as well as the various uh spin-offs um, the Fist of the North Star, uh, uh, game, um, Lost in Paradise, I believe, Lost Paradise, Fist of the North Star, Lost, pa <laughs> Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, um, uh, the Judgment series, uh, as well as like some of the various, uh, uh, non canonical spinoffs, like, uh, some of the, there's a couple of, uh, samurai yakuza games that were pretty much exclusive uh to um japan and whatnot so but um just i can't believe we're here you know it's uh tough i feel like i'm announcing somebody somebody dying because that's that's kind of what it feels like um 
how do I even say this? Uh, yeah, he's, uh, I guess, yeah, we did te- technically allude to it the previous episode, um, which was that he was uh, reportedly in talks of leaving Sega to uh, basically, I believe, um, go with another company. I want to say Tencent and, you know, make some, uh, you know, whatever. I'm presumably new IP uh, with that company, probably more than likely getting paid more because we all know that's more than likely the biggest motivator um, for somebody to drop ship. Uh, but then, I mean, at the same time, I mean, I know some people, what the Yakuza series has been a thing since 2005, I believe. And it's been pretty damn consistent since then. Um, it may have been earlier in Japan. Yeah. I think 2005 was when the original one came to the West, but I'm pretty sure it was probably out earlier. I'm, I want to say maybe 2003. Let's do a live check why not yakuza ps2 when when did it release apparently 2005 is that just maybe it is 2005 well, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I forgot all the other, even more miscellaneous spinoffs too, like, uh, the Panther series, which is like, I think the PSP exclusive game. So either way, huge as repertoire of, uh, of games lineage of, uh, that tried and true Yakuza formula that, um, at least now it's confirmed that he is, uh, leaving behind. So Yes, he is. Uh, it's been confirmed he's leaving uh, Ryuga Kotoku Studios, uh, as well as um, I think somebody who's also pretty high up as well in there, the uh, hierarchy tree uh, producer, um, studio lead Daisuke Sato, as well. So, um, that it's 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 um, it's tough to not raise concern considering, you know, how much, uh, Tashi hero, like really, you know, led the ship with this whole series. So I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned to be honest. I mean, that, that, that isn't going to mean I'm not going to play the, uh, the, I think they also additionally confirmed that, uh, Yakuza like a dragon Two. I think that's technically the official title supposedly um, is in the works and confirmed. So that at least will be the next Yakuza and, and uh, will also, you know, start Ichiban Kasuga as well. So, you know, I, I, it, it just is concerning, you know, um, and I guess I think the new head is apparently the guy that uh, did, I think a lot of the sub stories, for the Yakuza game. So, I mean, in of itself, that is, that is at least a little, uh, um, you know, uh, assuring to hear. So, Hey, maybe it'll work out just, uh, I don't know. It just feels like the Yakuza series has a very distinct direction that only uh, direction vision that only, uh, Tasha hero Nagoshi uh, was capable of, but I mean, it's been what we're on like Yakuza eight coming out. So, I mean, I, I get it at the same time. It's like, you can't, <laughs> you can't keep making these games forever. You know, it's at some point it's going to get stale bland. And I think, you know, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it is probably good to, uh, you know, mix it up, um, shake the, shake the chips, um, fuck it, <laughs> fuck it, uh, uh, shake the Skittles. I don't, I don't know. Mix it up, you know, uh, 
apparently there's people that mix Skittles with, with M&M's. Uh, you are crazy as fuck. I'm just, if you that person, I just want to let you know that. Because <laughs> that's crazy. You mixing chocolate with uh with fruit. I guess now that I think about it. Huh. <laughs> let me, let me have to try that now. This gave me an epiphany. Wait a minute. Um, so it's sad. It, it, it's bittersweet. Let's say that because at the same time, I am looking forward to whatever Tashir Nagoshi and Asuke Sato, you know, go to which at least I think they're being hush hush about it because of probably the rumors. But, uh, you know how some big departures go. They like they'll depart. Uh, they won't say where they're going. You know, be very re- respectful, cordial in terms of their goodbyes. And then, you know, a month or two down the line, pop up. Hey, hey, guys, we got our new studio at uh, at uh, Tencent. So call it um, y- Yakuza. Let's go. <laughs> that would be fucked up. <laughs> uh, that'd be the biggest middle finger to uh, Sega ever. <laughs> we got a uh, Yakuza. What up? Hey. Uh, <laughs> Kazuyur, Kazuyur, uh, Kazami, Kazuyur, Kazami. <laughs> it's like, all right, okay. You, you, you being a little too on the nose now. Let's, let's, uh, let's knock it down a notch. Let's, let's not be too blatant about, uh, you know, some issues maybe. Oh, I think that's at least what I would assume. It may be some issues with Sega or something that ultimately we uh ultimately would have them leave, but <laughs> cause cause we your cause we your cause I'm old. Uh play y'all wanna play some of that Yakuza? That is fucked up. Uh the more I think about it it's kinda really just grimy, but I don't think uh I don't think uh, Tashiro would do that. I don't think Nagoshi is capable of doing that. But it still stings nonetheless. So it's okay. It's okay. You know, uh, all good things must come to an end. At least for Yakuza, it technically isn't an end. But I mean, considering the the wishy washiness of uh, judgment, lost judgment. Consider, you know, the whole uh, legal kerfuffle with uh, the main um, character of the game, who's also um, portrayed by a real life actor in Japan and how they're being all, you know, stingy about uh, we we don't uh, we don't want our our actors likeness in uh, uh, the P- a PC version of the game because it's moddable. So um, that's going to be a no for us. So, come on now. It's, uh, it's messed up. It's messed up either way. So all in all, Hey, maybe it was for the best. Maybe whatever this 10 cent game is might be even better. Might reinvigorate, get the juices reflowing for uh Tasha hero Nagoshi. And I'm be a, be a sucker all over again. But I'm I'm sucking in a good way, you know. I just I just put myself in that box, but either way, best of luck either way to uh, Tachi Nagoshi. Thank you very much for uh, contributing to definitely one of my favorite series of all time, franchises of all time. That's uh really resonated with me, um, especially growing up. Um, I'm acting like it was like <laughs> in my childhood, like <laughs> 20 years ago when it was actually pretty impactful, uh, well within this last decade. So yeah, had to, had to say my piece, you know, it's, it's how I can cope. You know what I mean? Moving on. Oh, monster on a rise, <laughs> keeping that, uh, keeping that bad news train going. Chee-chee. 
Um, so, uh, I know, I think I talked about it last episode, but pretty much on the, uh, brink of the, uh, monster Hunter rise monster Hunter rise and sunbreak DLC, uh, announcement coming to PC, even though technically it was confirmed coming to PC, but they were kind of being weirdly hush hush about it, but we finally got a trailer for it. And, uh, I think along that, I think it was in particular their monster hunter, like showcase where they were showing, like, I guess a lot of monster hunter related stuff. And, um, I think after that whole thing, they did, um, shoot out a, uh, survey for people to fill out, which I did. And of course, one of the questions was, um, hmm, um, huh. Would you like, would you like cross save? from um uh your Nintendo Switch which pretty much everybody who's a big fan of Monster Hunter is forced to have um and most likely played uh 100 plus hours uh, easily uh would you like that uh you know to uh have that save crossed over to a PC or cross play between uh the Nintendo Switch and PC, which uh, greatly increases the population of players and the matchmaking chances of matching with other players to get into matches and hunts. Um, would you like that? Um, huh? Would you? You wouldn't really, wouldn't really want that, would you? I don't. I mean, do people even have a have a Nintendo Switch and a PC? That's doesn't make sense at all. So, um, (laughs) I'm being very sarcastic right now. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. I can't, (laughs) it's hard to portray. Uh, I feel like I kind of did, but either way. So, uh, that was one of the questions, of course, other ones, but that was the one that definitely stood out to everybody because that's like, you know, clearly, hopefully I didn't, didn't, uh, fuck up my damn, um, what do you call it? Basically stops clipping. Um, the hopefully it did not. Uh, yeah, I guess what is it called? Condenser. There we go. Um, so yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people voice their opinions very strongly because who would not want to uh, not play a hundred hours, hundred plus hours of, uh, this game all over again, even after having doing it and having all your settings and, and, uh, uh, that, that, that's like, whew, probably almost five hours in of itself, like getting everything set, uh, all your settings and uh, item combos set up. Huh? Uh, so either way, uh, pretty much, uh, earlier this week, uh, Monster Hunter officially, uh, released a statement regarding that. Um, uh, it was, um, you know what? hold on. Let me get, uh, <laughs> let me get ready. Get, get some, uh, get some hydration. <sighs> um, <laughs> guys that didn't say that, I just like saying that. <laughs> <laughs> we've heard your request for cross save slash cross play for monster Hunter rise and sunbreak. But unfortunately, after looking into it throughout the development process, we found we are unable to implement it at this time. As always, we appreciate your continued feedback and support. <sighs> I mean, did we, did, did we not do this with monster hunter world? That's all I'm saying. It's, it it just feels like that's what, I don't even know how to to express the immense frustration I have now, mind you, I'm aware Of course, not everybody is fortunate to have a a switch and a PC or, you know, uh, we'll have both. Um, it's either generally one or the other, which, you know, totally understand that. But 
you have to be fully aware that they are ex. There are also a, a very wealthy amount of people. Hell, there are probably a, a wealthy amount of people that didn't want have a PC, didn't want to wait for um, Monster Hunter Rise to come to PC. Um, considering they, they were op- honest about it um, and wanted to play it because they were so excited to play it. And maybe with the ulterior motive to hopefully um, get the option to transfer their save to uh, to PC. So um, I just don't I find it hard to believe that you clearly knew up ahead that you're going to stagger the releases and that a PC version is coming that you buy it by that principle alone. You are, uh, instantly, um, restricting people to, uh, a platform to play first and, you know, potentially not play PC, which I mean, obviously is the intent of, uh, platform exclusivity, but still it's like, don't, it feels like you're kind of, uh, you're betraying like some of your biggest fans, to be honest. I think that's kind of part, part of why I'm kind of, uh, up slightly upset about it because it's like we get like monster hunter world where, you know, uh, it came out on consoles first, but we weren't really sure if there was going to be a PC port yet. And then, you know, we did get an announcement pretty much, uh, roughly a year or so after it released, I believe. And then it came out, but then there was the issue where a lot of the, uh, DLC was, uh, staggered and totally behind the console versions of monster Hunter world. So like, um, Iceborne like came out first on console and then like, I want to say four or five months after Iceborne came out, then it came out on PC and then the same cadence with like some of the updates and stuff like that. So, I mean, now with the, uh, the PC port of uh, rise and sunbreak, they're going to be coordinated. So they are actually going to come out at the same time of each other, which, you know, as well kind of felt like it added more, you know, um, I don't know, evidence that it was pretty likely that rise would, uh, actually, you know, um, potentially have cross play and like cross play is not even the biggest issue. It's like, it would definitely be very welcome and very appreciated. But uh, my biggest gripe is like, <laughs> I don't want to play 120 hours of monster Hunter rise all over again, having to, uh, relearn everything specifically, um, uh, combos and, you know, you just have, you just put all the effort, initial effort into getting like a whole flow and like loop going for you that, uh, you really just can get comfortably grooved into. And then it just gets disrupted, disrupted specifically. And then just like, I just find that disheartening. It just, it really get, gives me a hard time to try to start over again. Um, you know, as a pretty big fan of the series and stuff. So <sighs> it just hurts, man. And <laughs> I like, like I, I supported monster Hunter world for PC, but like I only play like maybe five, six hours because like it just felt, I didn't want to do this again. Um, uh, given that it was before it was before, um, Iceborne came out and I think to, to the credit of Iceborne, it did give you a, uh, a faster path in order to get to, uh, Iceborne, like the Iceborne content, because if you, you've never played monster in the world and you just get Iceborne specifically, there's a lot of content you need to get to first before, or, you know, um, complete first before you get to, uh, Iceborne. So they gave you, I think very high, uh, weapons earlier for your character to in turn, um, have less struggle and basically expedite your uh, way to, uh, get into the Iceborne content. So 
I guess I potentially could wait. Um, yeah, I could potentially just hold out when a uh, sunbreak comes out and maybe critical path it at least that might be a more entertaining I don't know angle but it's just like I still have to set stuff manually all over again and uh 120 hours man I don't want to do that all over again but either way it it, it hurts me it's the it's disheartening, especially considering they they had the opportunity to learn their lesson before with uh, Monster Hunter World. Now, God forbid, I swear, if, if Monster Hunter World 2, whatever the next Monster Hunter is going to be, that, you know, will be the next big console based uh, Monster Hunter. I mean, you know, with the exception of Nintendo Switch, which is always considered a Switch in its own lane, you know, obviously for a lot of obvious reasons. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, it, uh, it hurts. It hurts as a, as a fan of the series, a pretty long standing fan of the series. Uh, it hurts. It hurts me so much. <laughs> uh, I know like in terms of just the discussion and debate of like what could possibly be factoring in. Um, what could be the issue with it was that, um, I guess DLC and purchasing DLC and, you know, the weirdness and like, I don't know, uh, (laughs) e-commerce, uh, you know, components that, you know, make it all messy. Like if you bought everything on the switch, uh, in terms of DLC, like will it transition over, which generally is no, but I mean, like you could easily just you know, if it's a costume or something, just default your character to whatever, you know, I guess default costume because you didn't, you didn't get the, the DLC or maybe some discount. If you, the game, the save can detect you already have some of the DLC or something like that. It's definitely a solution to it. So, and, uh, what I found interesting, like <laughs> within the tweet, um, uh, of them announcing it is that one of the, uh, apparently a modder, um, said it's pretty much actually pretty easy to actually transfer, um, transfer your, uh, save over. Of course, you know, you have to have a modded, uh, Nintendo switch, which actually I'm um, possibly may, may, uh, may, um, hmm, may jump down that rabbit hole considering the circumstances, if it's, uh, enticing slash, uh, easy enough. But, um, basically they were essentially saying that like you can, uh, it's just, it's just overall just easy. Cause they actually did it with world transferring the PS4 save to PC, which I didn't even know about until recently after looking up on that, that there was a tool um, that you can use to, to, uh, do that as well, which if I knew that I might've, uh, I might've jumped ship, but, uh, it's just the fact that I have to do this is annoying in and of itself that the extra legwork need to do to transfer a save. And then what if I do that? And then the account gets banned and, uh, Capcom, please. I beg of you, respect my time. I'm I'm getting old, Capcom. I don't have much time left. <laughs> I don't have much time left. <laughs> Please give me give me time. Give me give me my time back. Um, yeah, man, it is uh <sighs> real bleak, real bleak. <laughs> Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. First world problem. Sure. Of course. But I mean, that's a hundred hours. That's like, you could learn an art. You could learn probably some martial art. I don't know. I'm just saying, just let me focus on a new sunbreak content. Cause I know if, if, if Iceborne's any indication it's going to be very substantial and I'd like to just 
strictly play that for the most part, of course, with any other stuff I haven't played, but <sighs> please Capcom, at least how they phrased it. It seemed like, no, it's not going to happen for rise, but maybe it will be a surprise. But I mean, my biggest gripe is like, even if you can't do cross save, can't do cross play, like do what um GTA did where you, you can at least do at least a one time transfer and the transfer or the save is not transferable. You can't transfer back and forth or you, I guess cross save essentially one, <laughs> one save cross, uh, I guess is more accurate, but <sighs> at least that, whereas le- where I like my, which is generally my only intention, which is just to be able to have everything set, all my pre preset stuff set and be able to, you know, be on my way, maybe just have a little bit of an acclimation period in terms of the new higher frame rate and controls and things like that. So huh. it hurts, man. It really hurts. It really hurts. First world problems, but the really, really horrible first world problems. Huh? I digress. If it's not for Monster Hunter World 2, though. <sighs> Capcom, I, 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 I've told you so many times. If you don't get your shit together, <laughs> I'm going to blow a casket. I swear, oh, I swear to God. <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, all right. Enough ranting. My rant, my rant is over. Um, moving on. Uh, picking up, picking, picking them switch room is back up. <laughs> right as the, uh, the switch, switch, uh, OLED, AKA the swole led, uh, came out. Um, of course, shortly after the more, more of the, uh, switch rumors, uh, did pile on. So couple of, uh, interesting deets, if you will, uh, that I, I at least found interesting, uh, to discuss, disgust <laughs> Capcom, Capcom on a mind. I'm sorry. Disgust, uh, was, uh, which I think was an ongoing um, thing uh, in terms of DLSS, which is, I guess, the highly rumored technique that uh, the Switch was going to use to achieve 4K, which at least as far as like uh, the NVIDIA graphics card is like a godsend in terms of uh, giving you more power and, you know, uh, more resources to push more than frames or more that resolution. So, um, it only makes sense. And then, uh, I think what was a rumor previously as well, uh, I guess kind of got more steam was, uh, specifically, uh, big publishers and developers getting the dev kit late 2020 with, uh, with, um, the smaller companies getting them this year. So, take that for what you will. Um, devs are working on exclusives, some, uh, PlayStation Xbox ports, uh, devs targeting their games, <laughs> targeting their games to be done by late 2022. Uh, but a uh, game being done doesn't necessarily mean that when it releases for various reasons. Um, so, it could probably be stopped in the process for one reason or another. And, uh, at least in terms of the rumored release, uh, quote unquote, supposedly, uh, it would release holiday 2022 or early 2023, uh, big ass asterisk, you know, considering the very, uh, you know, once in a lifetime situation we are currently in now. So, Mm, I don't know. And I guess the one big thing actually was, which is probably the biggest, biggest concern, uh, is, uh, the, the big rumor that apparently, um, it, 
does not um won't have backwards compatibility uh that's at least highly suggested and rumored so uh at least data miners have suggested that the switch 4k will have challenges with being natively backwards compatible because of hardware differences um but uh mvg modern vintage gamer uh suggests nintendo has options to pursue backwards compatibility at least this whole thing uh at least this resurgence started from uh nate to hate um so yeah who's uh had a very uh pretty consistent track record with you know rumors actually being uh legit so uh yeah so uh at least the switch pro will uh likely be the switch 2 now which i think it's a given considering at least what we thought would have would have been the switch pro is actually just the switch kind of mid upgrade slight mid upgrade re hash if you will you know with better components and all that stuff so ah uh, the 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 backwards compatibility that's going to be that's going to hurt if if it's true i don't think I don't think Nintendo could do that though. Um, considering like how successful the Nintendo switch is, um, just to and alienate everybody with the previous, you know, library games and just start fresh just does not make sense to me. At least considering the switch, it doesn't seem like it would be necessarily that, <sighs> I guess depending on what, what, what the actual hardware and stuff is to, to really like, I don't know, find that out, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I definitely believe there definitely is going to be a second switch. I don't know in terms of the timing, especially considering the, uh, the pandemic, um, <sighs> that looks, uh, looks a little bleak. Uh, dare I say ambitious for uh, at least the projected time frame. So like holiday 2022, early 2023. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see um, what kind of suck to at least for those that uh, did get the uh, swole lead. But, you know, it, I think it's definitely contingent on if the backwards compatibility if that is actually in or out, that'll, I think that'll definitely be a big, um, X factor, even though I know a lot of people are yearning for a much more powerful switch, especially now with all the, all these damn games having cloud versions coming to switch now, which totally defeats the purpose of having a switch. You're confined to generally streaming it, uh, in a portal, well, console mode, uh, versus a uh, home, well, not home, but portable mode, which, you know, unless you're in a very good Wi-Fi spot, which again is very specific. And then on top of that, it's like, well, why don't you just dock it and, you know, go that route. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'll take it gladly. Gladly any day, but, uh, yeah. So there you go. Switch to boo boo coming, coming to, uh, well, a game store near you. I mean, I don't really, it's generally retail. I can't even say that <laughs> with confidence, but anyway, moving on. Next topic of discussion. Um, modern warfare, AKA Warzone. I mean, they're essentially kind of go hand in hand, but, uh, I think earlier this week, um, call of duty announced that they, uh, are finally, <laughs> uh, introducing a, a new anti cheat software called Ricket. I gotta do it. Ricochet. Oh my God. It's acting up again. Uh, let me try one more time. See if it acts, acts right. Ricochet. Fuck. <laughs> um, well, damn. Oh, maybe if I, uh, I don't think that will do it. Ricochet. 
Ricochet. <laughs> ricochet. Uh, let me try. Ricochet. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. So, uh, Ricochet is, uh, basically, um, Call of Duty's new, uh, anti-cheat software, which is at least from what I've seen, very much needed, uh, considering, you know, the population of Warzone and how it's definitely been a very toxic, uh, aspect of the game. I think I know it happened to me one time where you could literally tell they're cheating, um, <laughs> using like a pistol and I get killed like, <laughs> like fucking a hundred meters. I'm like, okay, okay. You just cheated on me. All right. That's <sighs> sure. All right. War zone. Yeah. So this has definitely been a complaint amongst the, you know, call of duty community for a long time, you know, for was war zone, uh, finally getting that in the game, but <laughs> We can't have nothing nice, apparently. So uh, pretty much shortly after this was announced, apparently uh, the Ricochet uh, software, which at least how it works, is that it's a kernel driver that you have to install on your PC, which generally is um, much more. Yeah, much more invasive than, uh, I guess, other uh, antivirus Well, not antivirus, but uh, anti cheat software. Uh, but <laughs> ironically, because, uh, of that people are like, uh, managed to, uh, get a leak of this, uh, software and, you know, uh, can technically use that to yet again, bypass the cheat system and therefore keep cheating, keep on cheating. So <laughs> it's like, as soon as, soon as Everybody's uh prayers have uh, been answered. Uh, oh, I don't know. No, they're not. Not yet. And then, like, that's the crazy thing is that this technically isn't even out yet. Officially, it hasn't been out or released yet. So I just find that funny as hell. As somebody who at least has not been into Call of Duty since Modern Warfare, I've been, you know, uh, mildly interested, you know, keeping up on news and stuff. But um, at least just was still been fascinated in uh curiosity uh you know uh about the uh the community and how you know the current state is with war zone cold war and stuff like that so who boy it's gonna be uh oh boy it's a fire <laughs> we'll see how it goes but man that is uh does not bode well with uh especially at least Again, we we haven't really seen it in action and how much maybe uh if it is problematic in of itself, maybe being too strict. But hey, we got to start somewhere, at least try to uh, stop these cheaters, these damn cheaters from, uh you know, causing havoc, ruining our fun. People who legitimately want to play and have a good time. So. <sighs> You hate to see it, man. You hate to see it. Moving on. Moving on. Um. So, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Definitive Edition. Uh, we finally, <laughs> finally, uh, we finally got an announcement for that game we've been waiting for. And is GTA's the definitive edition? <laughs> GTA's the trilogy definitive edition. Like, oh, okay, I, okay. I guess that's what I asked for. I didn't really, but all right. So at least we finally got an announcement. I don't even think we got a release date, which is kind of messed up. All this speculation and fervor for this game. Well, anything, <laughs> anything new from Rockstar at this point, it feels like, to be honest, but, uh, it was like a week grant the photo trilogy. I don't GTA six ain't coming out in forever. So just uh, <laughs> here, damn, <laughs> that's what it really feels like. But apparently this year, but did not give us a date. So, I mean, odds are it's definitely going to be November 
So it's like, why don't they just say November? They just say coming soon. So maybe they might do what they used to do back, back, uh, during the PS two days where at least I remember they would just, uh, like, I pretty much recall they just would just straight up Beyonce (laughs) surprise drop or shadow drop, uh, shout out to easy allies with that term, but, um, just straight up release it. No, like, uh, PR. Cause I mean, when you think about it, they don't even need it considering how like popular the game is, but I feel like they're going to at least just shadow drop. Hey, it's open, go get it and you know, go from there. So, I am still very curious to see what this game is. We have not seen a speck of like what the, what these games look like in this supposed new remastered like a uh, engine. Uh, well, I don't think it's like a totally new engine, but definitely a, a, a overhaul, a re a remaking of like all the assets and stuff. Uh, supposedly, uh, well, keyword graphical improvements, modern gameplay enhancements. So, I guess that that could mean a lot. That could mean a little. I mean, knowing Rockstar, I feel like they would they would go for the gusto, especially if they want to <laughs> keep uh <laughs> yet release yet another game that's gonna be at like the top ten charts uh for like what <laughs> pretty much indefinitely it feels like at this point, but <laughs> it will be kind of funny. I mean, it could happen. Is that? this game beats GTA (laughs) five. Then GTA five actually is kicked out of top 25. Then Rockstar's like, ah, fuck. Damn it. We were making money without doing anything. Fuck. Um, damn it. GTA six. They just got a, uh, break (laughs) in case of emergency break glass and GTA six. Everybody's just, Oh my God. Ah, fuck GTA six. Uh, okay. And then, you know, then that gets the ball rolling for GTA six because you fuckers won't stop buying it. Who, who keeps buying, <laughs> who doesn't have a copy of GTA five slash GTA online by now? I, I guess that's the only thing I could think of is really just cheaters who have been banned are like legitimately buying the games again to make a new account and get access to the game again, like making a new rockstar games account and then buying the game again because they keep getting kicked off for cheating, you know, exploit and doing exploits and getting like a ton of money and stuff like that. So, cause I can't mentally fathom who, who else in a grandma, uh, don't got GTA five by now because the game is, how is that possible? It just doesn't add up. It's the game is like been on, it's been on top of the charts indefinitely for, I don't know how long it's about to be on. It's about to get another resurgence yet again, because (laughs) they're bored again to the PS five Xbox series X. So now people who already double dip, go to triple ship, uh, (laughs) triple ship, triple dip. Um, include me admittedly. I I am not going to, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm just, I'm just stating what, what, the I did my part, but somebody's, <laughs> somebody's doing more than they need to. <laughs> Who's buying this game repeatedly? Somebody, does somebody have like 250,000 copies of the game in their home? They like just have furniture made of G- copies of GTA five or something. I just, it is fascinatingly frustrating, uh, how much this game is still selling. And I mean, it feels like this is a reason why we're not getting GTA six any sooner than we technically feel like we should have, but I digress. I digress. I digress. It's just something you just got to accept that you can't figure out. And you just accept it. You just accept it. You just accept it. You will never understand it. You just accept it. In this case, it's GTA five. It feels like it's the fucking Bermuda, Bermuda triangle. Really? It's like you put money into it and it's somehow 
recirculates and keeps keeps maintaining itself in the top 10 charts like indefinitely. I don't know that it, it still befuddles me to this day. <sighs> Either way. With that said, uh, that concludes uh, the news for this week. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what I've been what I've been gaming. I've been gaming on. I make it sound nasty, but it's not. Maybe it's nasty to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, first and foremost. First and foremost. First and foremost. Um, Metroid Dread, man. Metroid Dread is a uh, it's a damn good game. Let me tell you that much. Uh, I guess a little bit of backstory in terms of my history with uh, Metroid. At least, I guess, really the only the only Metroid game I played before this was Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. I never played the original, I never played Super Metroid. I know there was a 3DS uh, remake of two for the GBA, I think, Um, or uh, a remake of the the GBA, no, Game Boy, original Game Boy uh, ported and remastered, or I guess, pretty much a remake for the Nintendo 3DS, but pretty much my only experience with Metroid is Fusion. And I really love that game. And I think it feels like from the a story perspective, I think this actually is a direct sequel to Fusion, which uh, I, I'm not totally versed on like the Metroid lore, um, but at least from my familiarity with Metroid Fusion, when I played it way, way back, um, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot of nods in this game for sure. So definitely, uh, don't intend to spoil this game. Cause I definitely encourage you guys to play it. Um, cause it's good. So if you're a fan of the previous Metroids, at least for my, I guess, kind of osmosis of, uh, research and, uh, you know, looking up some of the gameplay, some of the games, it feels like uh, Metroid is, uh, pretty much, um, in line with the classic Metroids in the series. So, I mean, if you're a fan of the classic 2d Metroids, um, I think you'll definitely really enjoy this. Um, it's weird. I hear, um, I hear from a lot of people that, uh, the game is very hard, which I do agree with. Uh, it didn't seem necessarily as hard, at least as, as uh, I was like, prepared to be and maybe that could have been possibly uh an effect of that like being anticipating it hard like it wasn't that hard because i was anticipating like let me (laughs) let me be more cautious but um also somebody who's a fan of dark souls it's like (laughs) this ain't my first rodeo but it's not as of course not as part punishing as like the dark souls games for sure but it's definitely uh a lot of trial and error with, um, with, uh, the bosses, but at the same time, the bosses are fun as hell. Uh, they're really some of the best bosses I played this year, I'd say for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you, you, you're definitely going to die a lot, (laughs) definitely going to die a lot, but it's a lot to, it's an, it feels very intentional where you're like intended to die to, to keep learning there, the patterns of the bosses. And then, you know, eventually pick up where you can, you know, uh, go to avoid damage and then ultimately defeat them. And then when you be, when you'd be defeating a man, they'd be, they'd be feeling fulfilling as hell. I'm not going to lie. I think because of that same effect that, uh, dark souls has, has on you. I definitely felt a lot of those vibes with Metroid dread in terms of like, who damn, <laughs> this boss is hard. He is whooping my ass and then figure, Oh, okay. If I do this, I got it. And then, Oh, I, I should have did this this whole time. And that would keep me from uh, getting damaged and, you know, figuring those out. And then, then 
kind of uh, piecing them all together. Like you gradually <laughs> take baby steps to learn, okay, this is how I avoid this attack. And then, you know, you pretty much chain that all together and then whoop his ass. And then, you know, Samus uh, is a badass in this game. I don't care what anybody says, but uh, she don't give no fucks. And <laughs> she definitely exudes that energy throughout the whole game, which I definitely appreciate. I am totally down with, um, you know, she of course has the very, um, stoic kind of demeanor about her where, you know, you've very rarely hear her talk. You probably hear a grunt here and there, but I mean, that's it to my interpretation of the character that feels like pretty much in line with what she's generally been either way. So, um, yeah. And of course the exploration is, is there. I mean, it's a Metroid game. It is a part of the, the highly regarded, uh, Metroidvania, uh, feel, which is a lot of, um, a lot of backtracking, a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, well, I can't go here. Oh, I'm going to have to come back at some point when I get this power up. Uh, definitely a lot of that, a lot of, uh, interesting, uh, puzzles where, you know, um, fuck, I got to wait until I get this damn power up. And then when I, I got to go back, uh, do this, turn into a ball, bomb myself, do a flip, uh, shoot my beam in the sky. Uh, and then, um, uh, do the, do the, um, <sighs> do the, do the peace sign in front of my, my, my eye. And, uh, then I got, I got two plus two missiles. All right. All that effort, all that effort just for, um, just two missiles, huh? That's, that's, uh, that's what, that's all I get for them. That's all I put, put damn 30 minutes into this and all, all you going to give me is two missiles. That's all I'm good for. That's fine. That's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, I definitely felt burned. As you could tell, I definitely felt burned in a couple of cases where I was like, fuck, this was hard to, you couldn't give me a, give me one of them plus 10 plus 10 missile things. You couldn't give me a damn, uh, give, couldn't give me a, uh, instant, um, fuel tank upgrade. <sighs> damn. Okay. Well, all right. Um, so uh, either way, I definitely had fun. Of course, you know, it feels that that dopamine when you like uh, discover a secret, you know, shoot a wall and then you get a new uh, area to access and, you know, uh, get a secret item. So uh, I definitely appreciated that. Um, whew, uh, let's talk about that map, though. Uh, talk about fucking overwhelming, um, just overwhelming just overwhelming. That's <laughs> they just minds will write that on, on the damn map. Uh, yo ass about to be overwhelmed. <laughs> That's what it should have been on the map because my, well, okay. Starting out, um, of course, like the map gradually increases the more you explore, but you get to a certain point where <sighs> fuck is like <laughs> literally that's my damn it. <sighs> Everything is like weirdly colored where I don't know, it, it takes a while to kind of get acclimated to, but I feel like ultimately it could have been a little bit better in terms of like, I, I guess, presumably a UI perspective, but I don't know. I feel like, um, they could have made it more distinct between specific areas and, you know, in terms of highlighted areas, uh, which I mean, to its credit as well, they do definitely highlight a lot of areas that you can access, um, or, you know, that you'll need to come back to later. Um, you know, uh, they definitely notate that on the map. They, they do give you a pretty cool convenient option where let's say it's like, you know, <laughs> you come across a lot of these damn fire trees, uh, on the map and you, uh, you need to, you don't know where all of them are at to kind of remember to come back to them. If you at least find one on the map, you can at least do an option to highlight all of them. And then, uh, it does have a pretty generous, uh, tracking, um, uh, waypoint system where like, you know, in traditional, uh, open world games and stuff where, you know, you, uh, trail and, you know, are guided to go 
uh, not as like, you know, hand holdy as like maybe other games, like I guess <laughs> GTA, but it is at least a, a waypoint telling you, Hey, you probably should go in this area or whatever. So definitely, uh, very appreciated for like a Metroid game where, yeah, there's a lot of backtracking and a lot of, you know, like I said before, like, oh, fuck, I need a goddamn, I need the booty rifle to <laughs> <laughs> the booty rifle. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. The booty rifle is uh, here, but uh, you don't have it, so you can't you can't proceed in the area. So, at least having that familiarity with the previous Metroid game, I was like, okay. So, at least odds are, if you get a new power up, you just go to the areas that you can go to before, and normally you can you know uh, keep progressing the main plot of the game. Of course, there's a lot of diversions in terms of, of course, going to pe previous areas that had locked areas, you know, that are locked to power ups that you don't didn't have at the time. So, um, I definitely got lost a lot, though. <laughs> I, I say all that, but my ass got lost a lot. I uh, had no shame in looking up a walkthrough to catch up to like I clearly missed something. So I'm just going in circles. I've definitely like. Uh, wait, not necessarily wasted. Cause I mean, I enjoyed it. Cause like I would be in a scenario where like I got a, a power up and I didn't know where to go after getting it. Cause I felt like I unlocked everything that I needed to with the power up. And you know, it was some miscellaneous spot that I needed to put a bomb in or shoot something. And then it, you know, let me access that something like that. It was pretty dumb. But at the same time, it's like I did enjoy uh, getting lost and also trying to look for uh, other other weapons or uh, hidden power ups and pickups, which also they're all pretty nice in this game about where, you know, it will highlight uh, in white and flash an area where you can uh, actually get a. Uh, where a hidden items is located. So at least gives you a, a rough area to, to like, you know, at least <laughs> not put you completely in the dark and more than likely refer to a guide directly. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, not again, not spoiling the game, but overall it felt like a very concise, just fun, fun ride. I it didn't feel like it overstated it, its welcome. Uh, I guess one element we have to talk about, of course, is fucking, uh, the goddamn Emmy, uh, E M M I Emmy, 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 a bitch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let that be known. So I guess think of Emmy, uh, I guess mild spoilers, not really. I mean, it's, they've been showed in the promotional material and trailers and stuff. So for what that's worth, but it's. As Emmy is essentially, uh, I guess think, uh, Terminator or, uh, nemesis, but in, in the Metroid universe, that's probably the best way to think about it. Cause essentially you'll go, there are certain parts in uh, the map where they're called, I think they're called straight up Emmy zones where you go into it and Emmy is uh tracking and lurking around the area and it has tools that it will use to track you. Um, and you know, with each subsequent Emmy, there are like multiple, uh, versions of them, uh, you know, in correspondent areas, then they, uh, gradually get more difficult. Like one will be able to track you. If you like, I think shoot, uh, shoot your gun, uh, one, uh, just tracks your footsteps. So literally as soon as you're walking, you have to um, <laughs> keep book, book that shit. Or there's some techniques you can learn that I won't spoil that, um, you can utilize to kind of keep her off your trail in some cases. Um, but they, they are pretty fair about at least giving you some tools to not make you <laughs> completely at a disadvantage against, uh, against me. Um, I guess that's the other factor too. Like if, if you, if she catches you, you do have a moment or opportunity to, uh, escape, but the timing is like, 
at least from what I noticed, it's like super random. So it's hard to anticipate more often than not. I was pressing the button early as hell and then get my ass killed and game over. Um, Emmy is a big ass component to that. So you do get a lot of anxiety, like, Oh fuck, he's chasing me. Oh fuck. I don't know where to go. Um, huh? Fuck. And then you like more than likely go where you don't want to go and have to backtrack and, you know, go through that whole, uh, rigmarole, but it's fun. It didn't overstay as welcome. And then there are, I don't want to spoil that either, but there are periods where, you're able to circumvent the, that threat. I'll say that. Yeah. I think that's the best way to phrase it. So, uh, I guess the other big, uh, I guess I I, I don't even want to give it the, the credit of being a con controversy, but whatever, that's probably the closest thing I can describe it to is like the length of the game where people are, it's 2021 and we're still arguing about this, but people are complaining that the, the length of the game is short, <laughs> quote unquote short. And, uh, I, I guess the fact that it's 2d, uh, makes it less of a value, but uh, one in terms of the 2d argument, I would say personally, it's 2.5 D like fucking street fighter, uh, what, uh, four and five where it's, technically from a game playing standpoint 2d, but there are a lot of elements that do, uh, give you the perspective of 3d at the same time. So it, it definitely, there was a lot of moments where, it, I mean, overall, it definitely felt like a triple a game personally. So that's the first thing that needs to be squashed. And, you know, a lot of people that haven't even fucking played the game, having some strong ass opinions about <laughs> a game that you haven't even tried yet. That's a whole nother thing. It's like if you literally played, tried to play the game, that's one thing. But if you've never played the game and you're just straight up just being negative and just saying the game is horrible or uh, uh, it's 2D, I'm not going to like it or whatever. I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion, of course, but you can't just straight dog a game that you've not tried that. I feel like that's that's not fair either way, but going back to the uh, length argument is that uh, at least people are clocking seven hours or whatever, man, uh, if, especially if resident evil is any example, cause I know that was a fucking thing as well about its length uh, for this game. Total took me 13 hours to beat the game in total. So, I mean, of course, if you look up a guide or, you know, you know, some fucking speed runner that like downloaded the game from another country, like, uh, what, 20 hours before. Um, sure. Whatever. I mean, it, it, I think everybody's different in terms of how they approach this game. I think if you don't look up guides and stuff, you play the game, in my opinion, the way it's meant to be played, at least in the case I looked up walkthroughs was because I was genuinely stuck and didn't know where to go. Um, yeah, I think you're at least probably going to be like at least 10 hours, uh, playing this game. So <sighs> people with these, uh, negative opinions for stuff they have not, you know, experienced, man, where, <laughs> where, uh, either way, all in all who in, in terms of how everything ended and stuff, hype. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd say it's probably, um, I still have to figure it out in terms of playing some other stuff, but it definitely feels like it's, uh, I think it might be definitely bumping up above a couple other games I played this year so far for sure. So, <sighs> so Metro dread, I definitely recommend it. If you're a fan of the previous Metro games, think you'll definitely enjoy it. It's a lot to enjoy. Um, oh yeah, I guess in turn with that, I did get a, a Nintendo switch OLED, AKA the swole <laughs> AKA the swole <laughs> Um, it's pretty dope. Uh, again, very minuscule upgrades, at least enough for me personally. I've have, a, I had a launch switch and, uh, you know, I have some, uh, 
other motives uh, to do some things that uh, may not be uh, <laughs> if you uh, if you catch my drift, it may not be um, you know uh, may not be on the legal end if you uh, if you know. <laughs> <laughs> I made it way worse than it is, but either way, um, that's my plan. So that at least is what um, nudged me to actually get it. Otherwise, I don't. I didn't think I was gonna get it, but the fact that I uh, have this weird fascination to um, how do I say it? Unlock more power uh, to uh, the capabilities of uh, my, my property. Um, that's what nudged me ultimately, but it's pretty dope. I mean, definitely you notice the, um, the, 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 the OLED screen. It's definitely beautiful <laughs> as somebody who has an OLED. I mean, it, it wasn't, uh, it's noticeable. It's definitely noticeable, especially comparing them side to side. You could definitely the blatant difference. The, the extra real estate is very nice. Um, <laughs> I'm probably barely gonna, gonna use it in terms of the portable aspect, but in the very rare instances that I do go somewhere, I need to use it. Um, you know, Hey, I'm like, damn, (laughs) glad I got the old head. Glad I got that swole head. So, um, yeah. What else? I guess we'll move on to, uh, (laughs) at the same time. Um, I also got, the um, Oculus Quest 2 in uh, anticipation of Resident Evil 4. <sighs> fucking, fucking Facebook. They they know where to get me and they got me. I was like, <sighs> I was like I'm, I'm a, until I get that real killer app, that's probably when I'll jump in. <laughs> hey, um, man, um, who? I mean, it's weird. We just. We got Resident Evil Four uh, on VR, so um, <laughs> so what you trying to do? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm trying to do, Oculus. You know what the fuck I'm trying to do. <laughs> you know what the fuck I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, that <laughs> in a choco, man. <laughs> you gotta laugh at it though. Um, but yeah, uh, ultimately took that, took that took that dive i've officially crossed to the uh to the vr side and uh i'm i'm actually enjoying it i'm actually enjoying it. i've not necessarily played a full legit triple a game but i've been at least dipping my toe in uh a lot of stuff uh with it i guess just to talk about the hardware itself um it's pretty dope it's pretty dope i mean you get, you get the headset, you get, uh, you know, the two, uh, controllers that like does a pretty good job of like emulating your hand movement in a lot of the games. Um, and you also have, uh, well, I guess specifically you can use the headset by itself, which I think is the biggest selling point, at least for me that like, technically I could go somewhere that has more space where you're not necessarily tethered to, uh, to your PC or, uh, whatever. And, you know, have that flexibility. Um, but at the same time, you also have the option to, uh, connect it to your PC, um, and play VR games, uh, you know, with steam in particular, as well as, uh, Oculus's own offering, um, to give you more horsepower, uh, for playing your games that way, which is dope. And on top of that, uh, it's in beta now, um, where you can additionally stream your games over Wi-Fi and not have a need for the cable as well. So, uh, you need some higher grade technology and like, you know, a uh, really good Wi-Fi network to do that. But, um, at least the one time I used it, it was really good, but then I started having issues after that and then it, it got wonky. Um, I may try it again at some point, but. I was impressed in terms of just the wireless, uh, perspective that it just like, it was pretty seamless. I never ne- I didn't recall a, like an obvious point where it, I got disconnected and like I was in the dark and, or it was noticeable like lag or stuttering or anything like that, which I was very impressed by. So, uh, but you know, just the, 
because I'm a purist, I like, I gotta get the, gotta get the cable just to, just to ensure that high grade quality. And you can push more resolution and uh, frame rate as well with that too. So it's nice and convenient and all, but, uh, I'm a cable purist. I gotta love me some <laughs> good old reliable connection. Uh, I love me my wireless and all, but if it ain't wired, I mean, <laughs> if it ain't wired, it's not dire, you know? Um, so does that even make sense? I don't think it does. <laughs> It just rhymed. That's why I said, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah. Uh, it It's definitely a lot of hidden components that you do need to invest in, though. I will say that there's a lot, well, I guess, hidden costs. Of course, you know, anybody could just get up and go in and play it. But it's definitely a lot of hidden components that overall will make the experience way better as a whole that uh i do recommend you get like got a new headset strap that is uh, much more comfortable than the base one at least some of the research i did um got a new uh ear uh, eye thing that like basically lets it where uh it's more comfortable as well in that respect also hides light that will come up in the headset that will you know and obviously be distracting in a lot of cases um what else? Uh, I, I, I did get the, uh, <laughs> I guess they're like the, the controller condoms for them, you know, to protect it if you hit something. Um, uh, but I had a weird issue and they were at least supposedly the legit, excuse me, model, but, um, they, uh, they caused an issue with me at least that, uh, it was not properly tracking the controllers after I put them on. So I don't know what, what was going on with that, but, um, didn't work for me. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to take them back. So, um, yeah, did not, did not work for me. Apparently they work for everybody else, but I don't know. I put them, put them on legitimately and everything and they, uh, just caused issues. So, um, definitely, uh, the straps <laughs> to, uh, if you kind of want to let the controller go without, you know, letting it go kind of like, uh, you know, the Wii U and, uh, switch, uh, safety straps. So you don't <laughs> fucking destroy, uh, <laughs> expensive electronics that you don't want to destroy and instantly regret. Um, you know, so yeah. Um, but man, at least in terms of the general, I guess, idea concept, just the flexibility of, you know, having a dedicated headset that you can use portably on its own, but in addition connected to, uh, your computer for like steam, uh, games as well. And it does work well on both fronts. Um, personally, I think this, this is definitely the best headset to get in in terms of the cheapest uh, price point as well. I think like Facebook, they're technically selling these at a loss, but trying to make recoup that in a uh, software. So totally makes sense considering like how much of a, what, what should I say? Gimmick not Yeah, I guess presumed gimmicky uh, thing kind of like the Wii, but I'm a believer, man. I'm a believer. I was very skeptical. And, um, my biggest concern actually was, uh, getting motion sick. That was my biggest concern overall. Um, that I was concerned that I would just get sick, uh, playing in VR, but, uh, thankfully it would have broke my soul if I wasn't, but, uh, never really had any issues with motion sickness. Um, you know, I was able to acclimate to everything fine, even using like in game movement, uh, where I know, some, uh, a lot of the games have, a I I forgot what they call, I think it's teleport where they just teleport you. So you don't get motion sick, but at least I was able to, um, navigate around games and, you know, not get motion sick. So, uh, Hey, I am now, <laughs> I am now, I am now converted to a VR. I can, uh, <laughs> happily admit, um, my mind is open to VR. I have accepted VR in my heart. 
uh, will you accept VR? <laughs> I'm be a Mormon. I'm be a Mormon for VR. Coming with the <laughs> dedicated VR headset pack pack. <laughs> I'll actually legitimately wear the uh, VR headset coming to people's homes. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Um, have you tried VR? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just doing it. <laughs> I'm just doing it by my own goodwill. Um, if you could uh, donate to the, uh, <laughs> if you could donate to the fund, uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. So, all in all, I am very impressed by uh by uh Oculus Quest Two, uh VR in general. Something generally I was skeptical about. I was like, eh, I'm not sure if it's gonna have that that standing power or uh, you know, stand the test of time and, you know, be one of the gimmicks that like come in and, you know, goes away. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm open now. I'm, I'm open. Dare I say <laughs> now I'm, <laughs> now I'm motivated. <laughs> now I'm motivated. So, uh, yeah. So within that, um, Oh yeah. I guess one other thing is that, uh, at least in my scenario, I, uh, <laughs> I'm probably using VR in the most, uh, unideal way in terms of like my mindset was like, uh, I just want to use VR just to sit down and experience it <laughs> like a game, but just, you know, be more immersed, which I think it depends on the game you can do, but a lot of games, it does force you like, Oh, I got to stand up. Oh, I got to, I gotta, well, put myself at risk in terms of hidden stuff, um, which I've been very careful about. <laughs> so, uh, you, it does have a lot of cool countermeasures you can do to, you know, help prevent yourself from that. Uh, one real cool pro tip is that you can, uh, I think you have to enable it in settings is you have to double tap your, uh, headset where you can actually, it'll revert to uh, a camera that shows the real world. And then you could just tap it back to like, <laughs> go back, go back into the matrix, which is a, I think it's pretty cool where you don't have to be inconvenienced. Cause it's a lot of moving parts. You got, you got the headset, but then, you know, Hey, you want to get real immersed. You got to put it on the headset, uh, your headphones. And then, you know, um, <laughs> what else? Oh yeah. You got the, the, the cat, the, the cables tethered to your back. So you gotta, you know, watch out for that. So. But again, at the same time, it's optional in a lot of cases. If you just want to strictly do the, uh, the games that are loaded to the headset. So, um, yeah, all in all, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. A lot of my questions that I had, I, I answer going in. There's a lot of solutions, uh, to a lot of issues. Probably the one, the one glaring issue it's not really that big, but it's, you know, it, it's a thing. If you do wear glasses, um, I wouldn't recommend wearing these with glasses. At least I just want to be safe and didn't want to scratch up my lenses, my glass lenses or the VR headset lenses. So at least I just take my glasses off since I'm nearsighted. So I necessarily won't be that much of an issue. But if you are a uh, farsighted, I could see that being more of a problem, I think. Um, but yeah, at least I plan to get some, um, some prescription lenses, which they do sell where it basically is uh customized, uh, lenses, uh, for, you know, your prescription that you can, um, you know, associate with lenses that you put in to the headset, which, you know, makes life way easier in terms of <laughs> having to wear glasses on top of the headset, which, you know, and then, then it's going to get sweaty. And then, you know, on top of that with sweat, you probably get like, uh, the fog on your glasses. So you got fog on your glasses. Then you got fog on the damn, uh, lenses. It's all bad. It's just, it's, it's fog everywhere. You just, <sighs> you might as well be in the damn, just, <laughs> you just, just be all misty, just mist everywhere. You just playing, playing super hot you got, you just got missed is <laughs> super missed. I don't know. It's just, it's just don't, they don't, they don't go together real. You know, it, it, it all don't go good. Just don't, it, it just don't go together. So, um, <laughs> it's a lot of weird stuff you could do. You could get, it's, I feel, I see, uh, VR as, um, 
what if it, 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 it felt very similar to something else where it's like you can go as crazy as you choose to. That's kind of the impression I got from VR, like in terms of just the accessories and stuff that like people have been doing, like I've seen battery sets you can put on the headset to, you know, give you more battery life. You can, um, <laughs> people had these, uh, these, um, contraptions where you could put the, uh, the controllers on. If you're playing like a shooter where you can like, you can take them off. They're like magnetic. Uh, sorry about that. They're magnetic where you can like take them off, reload in the game, put it back on like it's a rifle. So it's crazy. You get, <laughs> again, you can like, you can go as crazy as you want. It seems, uh, depending on how, how crazy you, uh, you, you want to go, how, how deep in the rabbit hole do you want to go? So we'll see. I mean, <laughs> I don't see myself like fully converting to VR where I like, yeah, VR is my primary console, man. I'll play it all the time. Unless, unless they're, they keep, they keep churning out these games. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep uh, succumbing to, but, um, so yeah, that definitely a lot of games on my list that I do plan to, um, uh, you know, play periodically, but at least my big one, <laughs> it's got to be, got to be Resident Evil four. Um, so uh, yeah. So at least I'll talk about some of the games more in depth. That at least I tried, uh, specifically, which, um, the first one I briefly, uh, talked about, which was, uh, super hot, <laughs> super hot VR. So I never played the base game that is on like a, a standard non VR. Um, but I was like, this game definitely is dope to play in VR. I already know it. So I messed with the demo on the Oculus for super hot VR is pretty dope. Um, I don't have the room space for it, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't really see myself playing it in this environment, but, uh, I wish there was an analog option. Maybe it might be in the, the main version. I'm not sure. Maybe the, excuse me, the, um, steam version. Um, I don't know, but I guess what I ideally want is being able to play VR, but just use the analog stick for movement and be stationary. Um, like I don't have an issue standing up and like just being like in that environment, but, um, in terms of anything more involved, I think that's at least the, the issues that come into play that, um, at least, you know, I don't, that was one like hurdle, like having a post and mount dedicated cameras, which again is not a requirement for Oculus, which is dope. And, uh, you know, from that, everything does track pretty good, but, um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I managed with, with, uh, <laughs> playing a bit of super hot without, uh, damaging or messing anything up. So, Hey, that's a, <laughs> that's a win in of itself. But, um, yeah, super hot is dope. You know, where you, uh, for those that don't know, super hot is like kind of like a, um, how do I even describe it? A, how would you describe it? A puzzle, a shooter mixed with a puzzle game where when you move, people move, but if you stop, they stop and you get time to think. So there's, it's generally like puzzle situations where you have like certain uh, amount of enemies, generally like four or so, and you have to take them out. Some have guns and they're shooting guns at you. You have to dodge them. Or if you don't, you're dead. <laughs> and then you get like random items like bottles and ashtrays that you can throw at them. And like, if you kill them with it, they uh, drop the gun and you can catch it, shoot the dudes in the head, uh, get another gun from that dude, shoot him in the head or fuck. I'm out of ammo, throw the gun at them. And then they, uh, then they did. <laughs> so it's a lot of dope stuff and, you know, do it in, in VR. I think, definitely is the way to go. At least I'm like, it definitely don't hit as much, uh, playing this game, uh, in non VR than it does in VR. I think VR is definitely a way to play this game. So at least enjoy the demo, uh, from what I played, uh, from there. So definitely plan to, uh, get the full game at some point. Um, also played, uh, the lab, which is, um, it's, uh, it's, um, I transitioned from the, uh, 
just the dedicated headset and connected a uh, link to my uh, to the Oculus and played that way. And I messed with some of those games. So I played with uh, the lab. The lab is it feels like a kind of a <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess it's the lab feels like what's the game for the PS5 when it released uh, the Astros play world um, for V uh, <laughs> the the Astros play world for VR. Yeah. So basically just to kind of intro, introduce you to various concepts and, uh, you know, things you can do with the VR and, but nothing like, you know, too deep in terms of that, just let you interact with stuff and get you kind of get your feet wet and like what VR is and, you know, things you're capable of capable of doing in VR. So, um, which was cool. It was like, <laughs> it was one with a robot dog and a very vast, like Rocky Hill. And you know, you could, uh, play fetch with the dog, pet the dog. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I know we all did it. All you people that, uh, you know, play Mario 64 and drop the damn penguin off the cliff. Uh, all you people playing Mario super world, super Mario world with the Yoshi at that one point where, you know, it's like, <sighs> we both can't make this. So sorry, you know, you just, you, you just unmount and, you know, get, get, get yourself that boost. But at what cost? I mean, you're here, but Yoshi isn't. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, with that in mind, I did, uh, I did throw a stick off the ledge. So, uh, I don't think he, he didn't go for it. Unfortunately. I mean, I was curious. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, in, in this environment, you can do that. So I just threw it off the ledge. I wonder, Hey, playing fetch, right? You, <laughs> how, <laughs> how much you gonna, how much you gonna go for that? How much you gonna go for that? Uh, how much is going to take for you to get that damn, <laughs> get that damn branch back? You going, you going to risk your life for me. <laughs> like I'm fucking from training day. <laughs> you going, you going to risk your life for me for that, uh, that branch. You going, uh, going to drop. <laughs> it, how, how loyal are you to me? <laughs> is you loyal or is you not get the damn stick? <laughs> Uh, I did not actually, I did not, you know, play that whole thing in real time in VR at all. I didn't, I didn't do that. Don't, don't get it twisted. Okay. I don't, I don't know what type of person you think I am, but, <laughs> um, yeah. So the lab was pretty dope, uh, man, but <laughs> probably the biggest dopest game I've played experience. Oh man, uh, was freaking VR chat, man. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you about VR fucking chat. Um, I know this thing is caught on way before I, you know, got onto it. I've heard stuff about it, but I never really dug too deep into it. And I've, you know, I've seen some, I think various memes and stuff that probably used it. I'm, I'm guessing. But, uh, man, (sighs) VR chat is the shit, man. Uh, let me tell you firsthand VR chat is, is the game that definitely sold me on VR immediately after playing a little bit. (sighs) It is dope. Let me tell you. So I guess the general, I I guess, uh, you know, elevator pitch, I guess way to think about VR chat is, um, <laughs> think about the AOL chat rooms back in the day, but in VR. Yeah, that's probably the best way to, to, to think about it. So pretty much how it's set is that, you know, you load into the game, uh, you can choose your avatar. Apparently you can like load, do all these custom avatars. I saw a fucking <laughs> the most fucking random ass people in, in this fucking this game. 
uh, fucking Barack Obama, fucking um, demented Sonic, supersonic, fucking uh, Venom, uh, fucking uh, Winnie the Pooh with no pants. Uh, but not like that. I mean, because I know Winnie the Pooh doesn't have pants in general, but he, he was he looked very masculine um, and it looked like he should have pants because how he's how he's looking. OK, that's that's all I'm going to say. Um, a lot of uh, uh, hentai ish uh, people, you know, with the with the with the very um, immaculate physics. I'm going to just I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Uh, fucking, uh, I, did I say Barack Obama? I think I did. Um, the fucking, the rock fucking, um, just random huge ass creatures. I fucking saw a uh, solid snake. I fucking saw Dio from, uh, uh, Jojo's fucking saw, uh, G Giorno from Jojo's, uh, fucking it's, it's so many. Uh, Master Chief with big ass with a fucking big ass uh, assault rifle. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's the fun part is that, you know, people are just showing their avatars and um, having some questionable ones. And, you know, uh, it's just free chat. You could just literally chat to people and talk to people. Hey, man, how, how'd you? Hey, man, is that is that a what is is that? um. Oh, is that that dude from uh the me? <laughs> is that the dude from me sports? Is that uh man uh when you <laughs> when you about to fight uh Mike Tyson? <laughs> oh, we all know that dude from uh we sports dude that uh in the boxing game knows. <laughs> he was fucking people up. <laughs> Literally, I I didn't I I would not shit you. Uh, somebody had his ass in a in in a VR chat. So. It's, it's a lot of, uh, it feels like, uh, Roblox in a sense where, you know, Roblox is a game that has just a lot of customizability where you can like do very, any, literally almost any game that comes to mind, as long as you put in the work to like program and create it pretty much the same premise premise for VR chat. At least the probably the dopest one that I played was a squid game. Of course. So if you know the material, you know the material. So basically it has the infamous, um, I don't even know what you call it, the uh, quarters. I'll say quarters for a uh, squid game. And then of course the very first game. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry people. Um, I'm just, I was just trying, I was doing the Anamana, Anamana Pia version of that, but Either way, uh, yeah. So there was Squid Game. I was playing uh some fucking uh uh what was it? Uh, Cards Against Humanity. They literally have Cards Against Humanity that you can play with people through VR. You can literally pick up the cards, have them set up, look at it, and you know the whole thing. It's uh, it is dope. I I I was testing out as first. I'm like, uh, it doesn't seem that cool. But then it's like you actually start having conversations with people you would never <laughs> conversate with in life. Never even meet, get a chance to meet. It's, it is dope, man. I have to say I am a, I'm a believer. It was pretty dope. Just having just genuine connections with people that, uh, you know, <laughs> people going through some shit in VR chat. Let me tell you. So, um, but it's cool. It was fun making connections with people. And, you know, just BS it <laughs> kind of remind me back of the old days, you know, there wasn't all dynamics and stuff. Everybody just having a good time, you know? So man, I I'd recommend first thing you, you, you should play is a VR chat. Um, I tried it apparently is on Oculus quest two. I had some issues playing it on Oculus quest two, um, for some reason, but I just went to the steam version and played it through, uh, the Oculus link set and, you know, played it that way. But, um, yeah, man, it's fun. Now, now I got the, the, uh, the bug. <laughs> now I'm trying to see how people were modding in, uh, uh, avatars and, uh, see how that is. Um, but, Man, I think the probably the biggest selling uh component of uh 
of a Oculus Quest is this VR chat. It is fun as hell. And apparently you can play it just the desktop version if you don't have VR and just are curious. You definitely are missing out on a, a lot of the uh, fun of VR chat though, like interacting with people and like <laughs> various stuff like that. But it's fun, man. It's it's a great time. It's a fun time. I am a... Uh, <laughs> I played that way more than I should have last night. Um, and I paid for it dearly, but, uh, man, <laughs> it was fun as hell. I have to say, I haven't had that that much fun in a while. So highly recommend if you ever jump, jump into that VR, VR train, VR, VR chat is it. It's a uh, free. I know they have some, um, overall it's pretty much just free really. Um, but you just are confined to like a set amount of avatars, which I'm assuming maybe you could eventually get. Um, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm probably going to do some research to see how I'm just going to get the most <laughs> unapologetically black dude. Well, that's, that's another thing too. I forgot, you know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it ain't a, it ain't a, uh, a, a, a public chat room without, you know, uh, getting some hate. I'll say that. Uh, I left, <laughs> left those rooms pretty quick. Uh, oh, oh, is that a, oh, is that a black guy? Is that a, oh, you get out of here. You, <laughs> um, it's pretty much, pretty much what happened. So yeah, a lot of hard R's being, uh, being, being pushed around. Didn't stay in those rooms too long. I mean, let me just say that. So. But in terms of <laughs> the highs are pretty fun, man. It's a lot of cool, fun stuff you can do in there. So, um, yeah, man, highly recommend VR chat. Shit is fun as hell. I may, if I, if I figure it out, I might try to stream it, um, get the dynamics down, but yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, pretty much that's been it. I just wanted to at least test, test the waters for VR. See if I, I didn't have any issues with it. I just get sick all the time playing it, but like literally played <laughs> fucking VR chat for like hours and it's totally fine. So that's good to, good to know. Now I, I, I can fully go hard, hard in, in the VR paint. I don't, I don't know the term, but, um, yeah. So yeah, it's like, I'm just amazed. I think I'm surprised by how great VR is. I didn't think it was, this dope and immersive and fun. And I guess <laughs> even more, uh, more of a means of, uh, es es escapism essentially. So, Hey, I mean, if it ain't fun, what are you doing? That's, that should be the motto. Um, yeah. So pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much all I've been up to gaming wise. And of course, um, getting back into the media, uh, I did watch, uh, the walking dead, uh, the, <laughs> it's so annoying. I have to say this, <sighs> the season finale of part one of the walking dead, uh, it will continue with season season 11 part two in February. So, uh, I guess spoilers for the walking dead. I don't think anybody watches it, uh, to be honest. I'm sorry <laughs> if I spoil the walking dead for you, but, uh, again, spoilers, spoilers for the season, season, season 11, part one finale of the walking dead. Um, we're basically, uh, what was it? The Reapers, uh, with, you know, Daryl being the, uh, the, the, the hidden agent, double eight, not really a double agent, but you know what I mean? Uh, the imposter <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. The imposter for this. And, uh, it came to a point where basically Daryl confessed finally to, uh, you know, his little fling that's with the Reapers now. And he's like, Hey, um, yeah, I'm actually with those people and I'm just, just doing this just to, just to get, just to get rid of them. And like, how dare you, Daryl? And then, you know, it comes to a point where, you know, uh, they find out fucking <laughs> Daryl is, is, the, is the mole or, uh, the imposter. 
And then uh, as soon as he's about to, he finds out what's her name actually kills the leader. I forgot his name, but he's dead. And then I guess it's presumed that she's probably going to be a leader now. And it's going to be this weird dynamic where, you know, of course there's going to be turmoil and, and pain and bloodshed in um, season part two, see part season 11, part two of the walk at dead. Um, Hey, damn it. I'm going to see this through. Okay. Let me have this. <laughs> Let me have this. Um, I liked it though. I, I liked it. I mean, I'm sorry if this, this might be some bias coming in, but I mean, I thought it was fun. I mean, maybe it's a comfort thing. I've, I've probably said this before either way, but why am I explaining? Why am I trying to justify this? I shouldn't. I don't need to. Okay. I enjoy it. I just want to see it through. Okay. I just want to, I just want to know how it ends. <laughs> I just want to know how it ends. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah. During the, at the house, they were, you know, uh, I guess the zombies, uh, were coming into Hilltop, not Hilltop, Alexandria, I think. And, you know, they're trying to figure out how to survive. And I guess they l ultimately are letting the zombies in, but they're, they're breaching up, uh, on the second floor. And then, uh, Judith and this other girl, they, are uh, uh, they, they couldn't make it in time. So now they got to go to the basement, but the basement is flooding. Oh no. <laughs> So we're pretty much left on a cliffhanger, uh, it was well for that too. So tune in next time on walking dead in February. So yeah, <laughs> I got to see it through. I got to see it through. I just want to know. I just want to know. Okay. <laughs> just, I just want to know. Um, yeah. Other than that, that's pretty, pretty much been it for me. So with that said, I think that'll conclude episode episode, uh, damn it. One twenty five switch of sites podcast. Uh, if you did uh, like or appreciate this podcast, feel free to like rate and subscribe on your various podcasts and platforms as well as YouTube. Uh, I do stream this live on Twitch TV slash a switch, uh, record it live on Twitch TV slash a switch as well with uh, maybe various gameplay at some point, who knows? Um, you can also catch archives of this podcast on YouTube as well at, uh, youtube.com slash a switch. But yeah, guys, until next time, get your game on. Oh yeah. Nobody's safe.